Robert Goddard, the American Pioneer of Rocketry Robert H. Goddard, an American scientist and engineer, is famous for creating the world's first liquid-fueled rocket, as well as implementing three-axis control to rocketry. Goddard's work as a scientist and engineer ushered forward the space age, and Goddard's inventions set many important milestones for spaceflight. Years after his death, Goddard was recognized as the founding father of modern rocketry due to his scientific approach to studying and constructing multipurpose rockets. Robert Goddard was born in Worcester, Massachusetts on October 5, 1882, to Nahum Danford Goddard and Fanny Louise Hoyt. Goddard's only brother, Richard Henry Goddard, died before the age of one. As a child, Goddard exhibited curiosity about nature, observing the stars with a telescope and watching birds fly. Later on, he also became very interested in science. In his youth, Goddard was also prone to colds and bronchitis, and spent much of his time sick reading. The books he read further pushed his interest in the field of science, which his father encouraged, and Goddard conducted experiments in his yard. He once tried to jump higher by holding a piece of charged battery zinc and also worked with chemicals in the house, although for a short time. At the age of 16, Robert Goddard read H. G. Wells' book, War of the Worlds, and became interested in flight, particularly spaceflight. He then attempted to create a balloon capable of flight in his workshop, making the frame out of aluminum and filling it with hydrogen. Although the project failed, Goddard did not lose hope and dedicated his life to spaceflight in 1899, when he climbed a cherry tree to prune dead branches and was inspired by the view of Mars from the tree. As Goddard's interest in flight grew, he began to read more about the subject and studied the works of aviation pioneer Samuel Langley, who took particular interest in the flight of birds, as did Goddard. Goddard also read Newton's Principles of Mathematics and applied Newton's Third Law of Motion to motion in space. From his studies, he concluded that if mankind were to ever reach space, it could only be accomplished through math and physics. After Goddard graduated from South High Community School, he began attending the Worcester Polytechnic Institute in 1904. While at Worcester Polytechnic, he attempted to fire a gunpowder rocket from the basement of the physics building, earning himself a reputation among students and teachers alike. Goddard received his Bachelor of Sciences degree from Worcester Polytechnic in 1908, and in two years received his Master of Arts from Clark University. He stayed at Clark for a short time after receiving his master's degree in order to earn a PhD in physics. Before graduating from Worcester Polytechnic, Goddard had begun scientific writings on many subjects, most of which were closely related to rocketry. In 1907, the journal Scientific American published an article written by Goddard about gyrostabilization of airplanes, something many scientists were working on at the time. He also wrote about the possibility of using liquid fuel with oxygen as an oxidizer in 1909. While working at Princeton, Goddard began working on ideas for rockets to be used to study the Earth's atmosphere and developed ways to calculate the velocity and position of a rocket during a flight, given its weight, and the velocity of the propellant exhaust. In early 1913, Goddard fell ill with tuberculosis and for months did not work on rocketry. However, near the end of his recovery, he started his work again and registered two patents as soon as he recovered. Goddard began work on solid-fueled rockets in fall of 1914, constructing them in the Clark University building where he worked as an instructor. His first rocket launch occurred in 1915 and was loud enough to alarm the janitors, after which Goddard took his experiments inside. Instead of launching rockets, he decided to conduct tests on the efficiency of powder rockets. Using the newly invented De Laval nozzles, Goddard was able to achieve 63% efficiency with gunpowder as opposed to the 2% efficiency seen otherwise. Goddard's work soon became too expensive, and he began seeking sponsors for his research. After reaching out to the Smithsonian Institution, Goddard managed to secure a five-year grant amounting to $5,000. Goddard had drawn the interest of the Smithsonian 
by saying he believed a rocket was capable of reaching altitudes of higher than 350 kilometers. Clark University and Worcester Polytechnic also allowed Goddard access to their laboratories to conduct his work. When the United States joined World War I in 1917, Goddard turned his attention to implementing rockets for use in war. He believed that rocketry could be applied to mobile artillery, field weapons, and naval torpedoes. In early 1918, Goddard developed the idea for a tube-based rocket launcher to be used by soldiers who could carry it easily by hand. Although the army was impressed with this weapon, World War I ended soon after Goddard's demonstration, and Goddard ended work on the project. Following the end of World War I, Goddard returned to working on the idea of using rockets to explore space. At the recommendation of one of his friends, Goddard asked the Smithsonian Institution to publish his works from 1916. In these published works, Goddard described his experiments with the De Laval engines as well as his notions that rockets could be launched to reach the moon. The report, titled A Method of Reaching Extreme Altitudes, is now considered a cornerstone of rocketry. At the time of its publication, Goddard's document received much attention from the American public, most of which was negative. Articles, such as those in the New York Times, scoffed at Goddard's suggestions and even went as far as to say that thrust is impossible in a vacuum, claiming that Goddard lacked the knowledge ladled out in every high school. As a result of this harsh media attention, Goddard only became more secretive and protective of his work. In 1920, Goddard returned to working on liquid fuel rockets. By September of 1921, he had experimented with mixtures of liquid oxygen and gasoline, and by November of the same year, had tested the first successful liquid propellant engine. Using a pressure feed system, he conducted static tests in December of 1925. The engine was able to lift its own weight, bringing Goddard one step closer to launching a liquid-fueled rocket. After another three static tests, Goddard launched his first liquid-fueled rocket on March 16, 1926. The rocket traveled 184 feet total and rose 41 feet in the air after flying for 2.5 seconds, after which the lower half of the nozzle burned off. Goddard considered this launch successful as he both managed to make the rocket fly nearly 200 feet and learned that the rocket would need more than just fins to keep it stable during flight. With adjustments to plumbing and stability, Goddard launched more rockets. When the New York Times learned that Goddard was testing rockets, they proceeded to publish yet more articles on the subject. However, this time the articles attracted the attention of Charles Lindbergh, an aviation pioneer famous for his flight across the Atlantic. Goddard and Lindbergh formed a partnership, and Lindbergh secured financial backing for Goddard's work in the form of a four-year grant totaling $100,000 and a home in New Mexico. In the summer of 1930, Goddard relocated his facilities to Roswell, New Mexico, a location chosen due to its privacy and climate. Rocket assembly and testing began soon afterwards, and by 1931, Goddard had managed to modify and rebuild his earlier prototypes. By 1932, he had launched rockets with gyroscopic guidance systems mounted on pivots and directly controlling the rocket's steering via smaller pipes in the exhaust system. Although these rockets flew for short periods of time, Goddard considered them a step up from his previous models. Temporary lack of funding as a result of the Great Depression halted Goddard's work for several years, during which he returned to Clark University. When he restarted work in Roswell, he began making his A-series rockets, similar to previous models, but with some changes that Goddard hoped would improve stability. His A-5 rocket, implementing his gyroscopic guidance system, flew to an altitude of nearly 1.5 kilometers and achieved a maximum speed of 550 miles per hour. Goddard's success with the A-series rockets inspired him to create the K and L-series rockets designed to reach high altitudes. Goddard's A-4 rocket was also the inspiration for the German V-2, a rocket developed to bomb Allied cities during World War II. German V-2 rockets, while taking their design from the A-4, were heavily modified and were the first to pass out of the Earth's atmosphere.
Goddard's K-series rockets focused on power, and tests of the engine achieved a thrust of 624 pounds. However, the combustion chamber was prone to burn through, and Goddard experimented with cooling systems for the engine. One cooling system he had designed in 1923 involved circulating liquid oxygen around the combustion chamber, but Goddard discarded the idea. Another idea, circulating excess gasoline around the combustion chamber, was also discarded due to its ineffectiveness. Goddard's L-series rockets were more successful in their altitude tests, reaching 2.7 kilometers into the atmosphere, partially due to their more compact design. With these designs, Goddard also tested using multiple combustion chambers in hopes of increasing thrust while still keeping the design compact. One model with four combustion chambers was able to reach a height of 200 feet, showing that flight with multiple combustion chambers was possible and fairly stable. From 1940 to 1941, Goddard worked on his P-series rockets, which, similar to the L-series, went for a more compact and lightweight design. To achieve this, Goddard used propellant turbo pumps that pressurized the propellant and allowed for greater thrust from the engine. As most companies at the time were reluctant to produce turbo pumps, Goddard was forced to assemble them on his own. Even though both attempts with the turbo pumps crashed, Goddard considered the rockets a success. Between 1926 and 1941, Goddard tested 35 rockets in total, most of which crashed after a short time. Despite all the errors, Goddard considered every test a success since he would learn from each one. His highest rocket managed to ascend to a height of 2.7 kilometers in 1937, something topped more than 70-fold in five years in Germany. In addition, the interest of the American public in Goddard's work was extremely low, much lower even than that of the German program years later. Goddard's conditions were far from optimal of those to design rockets. Goddard lacked much of the technology and resources needed to create and test rockets, little of which he made up for in his methods. German and Soviet spies had obtained reports of Goddard's work, putting them at an advantage to the United States, as both countries found the topic very valuable. The United States realized the importance of rocketry and Goddard's work much later, when Goddard was asked by the Navy to build a device to help planes take off from short distances. In September of 1941, a Navy lieutenant suggested to the Bureau of Aeronautics that Robert Goddard could design the jet-assisted takeoff unit that the Navy could use in World War II. Even before the contract was signed, Goddard began work on a variable thrust engine that could be attached to a plane to help it take off. The December attack on Pearl Harbor only increased his resolve to create such a device, and Goddard moved to Annapolis, Maryland, where the Navy wanted to conduct their work. By August of 1942, Goddard had created an engine capable of putting out 800 pounds of thrust for 20 seconds, and commenced tests on an actual plane. On the seventh flight, the engine caught fire, and the plane was forced to land. The Navy eventually discarded Goddard's jet-assisted takeoff engine for safer solid-fuel alternatives, and after many of Goddard's attempts to convince the Navy that liquid-fueled rockets had greater potential, the Navy adopted his designed propulsion control system. Nearing his death, Goddard was able to view the German V-2 when the U.S. Army sent captured rockets to the Naval Laboratory in Annapolis. After careful examination, Goddard claimed that the Germans had stolen his design. German engineer Werner von Braun remarked that Goddard had saved them years of work, and his rockets, although rough, had blazed the trail for further innovation. Robert Goddard died on August 10, 1945, aged 62, in Baltimore, Maryland. Due to public opinion of his work at the time, Goddard was very secretive and protective of his privacy, and his work was only acknowledged as important years after his death. Robert Goddard's inventions established the basis for modern rocketry and would lead mankind directly into the space age. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite on the video, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, 
or check out the featured channels for more videos.